Driven, Remax Hallmark's real estate show, with your hosts John De Perez and Diane Salhani. Awesome! Welcome everybody to the Driven Real Estate Show by Remax Hallmark. Today, Dan is not with me, but we've got someone even better. We've got. Hi, I'm Jennifer Evelyn, and I am part of the leadership team in the Durham offices. If you have not met me yet, find me everywhere. Amazing. So it's the John Durr and Jennifer show today, and we are proud to introduce this fantastic duo, which works out of Jennifer's region, actually, Mahit Mon and Andrew Palillo. I hope I pronounced your name correctly. From the Bold Group. So welcome, gentlemen. Thank you. Thank you for having us. Happy to be here. Uh, so let's get started. So we're, we're here on our Zoom. Uh, for those of you who are watching us through the Facebook feeds on the networking groups, feel free to type in any questions you might have. And of course, some of you will be watching this on YouTube once it's on YouTube. So let's jump right into it. And Jennifer, if it's okay with you, I'll ask the first question and then we can uh, take it from there. Awesome. So Mahit, Andrew, how did you each get into the real estate business? What was... Um, how did you get started in, in real estate? And then let's explore how you ended up working as part of a team. Go ahead. Sure. So I initially was interested in real estate to actually to be an investor. I wanted to get my real estate license because I wanted to just get into investing. And um, I actually didn't have too many intentions of helping people buy and sell just uh you know whatever came my way but then when i realized things were really rolling and and, and the network started uh started feeding me um i just ran with it and then uh that was basically it i, I wanted to to get access to trev to find some deals and um and then from there you know the the business started taking off i i, I saw the uh potential in being a, a realtor and then uh kept growing the business. So it kind of went the opposite way of usually you'd get your license and then you'd make a couple of sales and a bit of income and then start investing. For you, it was yeah. actually, you wanted to be an investor. You, you thought, hey, it'd be great to have access to all of this information. So why not become a real estate agent or right. get a real estate license? Right, right. And I, I, do, I do invest now um, still. Um, so so that plan is, is still moving forward. But yeah, the... Uh, Service servicing clients was was never re really my intention, but then, uh, like I said, I, I realized the potential in the business and and how rewarding and it could be, and uh, just ran with it. Awesome. How about you, Mike? So I never really even thought of becoming a realtor. It was all by accident. Um, I remember um, I was trying to I was going to a different direction, and whatever I was trying to do wasn't working out. And I remember I was with my cousin who was a realtor, still is, and uh, he was showing a condo by Scarborough Town Center. And there was a BMW M3 parked outside and it said top realtor on it, on the license plate. I still remember the license plate. And I'm like, how much money do these guys make? And my cousin told me how much money he makes. I'm like, okay, maybe I should get licensed. So I got my license. You sold on the dream. Sold on the dream. <laughs> tell, tell, us the, tell us the real story now. No, I just can't. <laughs> My my question is, did you actually buy yourself I, one of those M three? I, I still I still never got the M three. I still have a Dodge Caravan. <laughs> <laughs> one of these one of these years, you'll you'll get it. So so that's how you each individually became into in real estate. And as you were saying earlier, Andrew, you started in twenty fourteen, Mahip in two thousand and nine. Right. How did you end up coming together and creating the Bold Group? Um. So funny enough, when I joined Remax Hallmark. My office was just placed right beside me. So he was here before before me. Um, he was actually the first kind of agent who kind of welcomed me, I think, uh, to, to the brokerage. Um, not only just being beside me there, but he was in the office every day. And, uh, you know, that, that was my mentality with my men mentality with real estate is get in the office. If, you, if you're not showing houses, you should be in the office and, and you know, making your calls, doing your follow up. So that's always been my style since I started. And then I realized quickly that was his style as well. He was always in the office, um, which I liked. So we, I think for about a year, we just, um, you know, worked across the hall from each other, or, I mean, I guess across the right next wall, to each other. Yeah. Yeah. Beside each other. And, um, we would just kind of keep each other motivated and, and, you know, make, make calls. I would hear him calling. He would hear me calling and, 
you know, after, I don't know what, a year and a half of two years, yeah, maybe two years, two, two years of us each, uh, of each doing our own thing. We kind of just looked at each other and said, Hey, how can we kind of blow this up to the next level? And, uh, decided to join forces. And I, I still remember I got a text message from Andrew saying, Sam thinks we should make a team together. I still have that text message. This is like 20, 2019 towards the end of it. And, uh, and yeah, it was, uh, Sam who there gave us the idea. Credit to Sam. Credit to Sam. Again. Credit to Sam. So there you go, Sam. The rest is history. He's a realtor matchmaker. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> I love it. And I love that you've already kind of touched on a bit of your success, but what do you really both consider? Like, what is the true secret to your success? Um, I think, it, I mean, not just in real estate, in, in, any, in anything you're doing in life, consistency is the key to success. Whatever it is you're doing, you got to have faith in the fact that it's going to work. And um, my, I mean, whatever I did so far is I've just taken what successful agents have done and I've just copied and implemented it in my business. I haven't backed off. I just kept working at it. And consistency is key. So, yeah, no, I, I think that's the main thing as well. Um, you know, whether you start off farming or cold calling, you know, you have to just keep going, keep going. Um, you know, create your regiment, stick to it and uh, stay consistent. So I think that was the biggest thing for myself as well. Yeah. Awesome. awesome. Which is, you know, pretty, pretty self-explanatory for those of you who are watching and, and will be listening to this as well. And it's, it's really just as practical as that, because in the real estate industry, a lot of us are looking for that secret recipe, right? That magic, uh, magic pill or whatever you call it. And it's really just more practical than we think. So seeing your great heights you were for under the remax brand you were the diamond team for 2021 you've each individually achieved such fantastic accolades chairmen's titans and and yet you know we see this today but of course throughout your years of getting into real estate i'm sure there were some struggles and challenges so what would you say individually were your what each of you struggled with and then sort of growing as a team what were your growing pains as a team and then how did you overcome them Sure. Um, so some of my struggles, I guess, starting out was just, um, so I, I was, I think I was 20, I must've been 24 when I got licensed. So I felt like one of the big things for me was walking into a listing presentation, you know, older couple who's maybe meeting somebody who's around their age range and maybe, you know, can relate to them more. So age was, age was a big thing for me when I first started, I think. Um, and, um, how, how I overcame that, uh, was really just practicing my, practicing my scripts through my presentations, um, just getting very comfortable and learning how to be, be confident when I'm talking to potential clients. Um, and then, I mean, it all just comes, I think through experience, um, you know, through, through the, through the repetition of, of, uh, you know, like I said, learning your script, learning your presentation, perfecting your presentation, um, that, that helped me, um, you know, actually start landing some, um, some clients who maybe I wouldn't have got previously. Um, so, so that was a big thing when I think I first started. Yeah. I think for me was, um, understanding which part of this business I'm good at, right. Which part I am really like, which part I really enjoy doing. And then the second part was also lead gen, uh, and lead gen ties back into knowing what you're good at. Right. So um, there's different ways to prospect, different ways to ge generate business, different ways to attract clients. And uh, for me, once I figured that out, which one was the best for me and what kind of clientele I wanted, I would hear it all the time that you got to you can't work with everybody. You, you're not going to you're not you're not here to look to like you're not looking to work with every single person on this planet. So once I knew exactly what kind of client I wanted and uh, then I just made sure that I had a lead gen system in place to get that client to come work with me. Once you figure that out, I think, and you do it and you put your sweat equity or your check equity behind it, nothing's going to stop you. Amazing. So just pretty much putting the right pieces of the puzzle together. And I think yeah. that's what really takes time in, in our business is, you know, we're going to have some successes, some failures and some challenges. And especially in a market like this, where, we're kind of not used to a lot of the things that we're experiencing right now. It's a total 
totally different uh, environment. And yet, for many of us, we've been through similar things before, and we just yeah. have to realize how to how to overcome it. Yeah. Yeah. Right. And kind of expanding on that, you know, now that you've actually managed to find what clients you want to work for, is that how? you have built your business to the point, like what else have you done to help you get to that process and to build your business to the point it is at now? So for me, uh, once you find out the kind of client you want to work with, um, to find that client is not hard. Like for me, majority of my business was farming, right? So now it's also becoming database, but majority of my business was farming. So I knew exactly where I wanted to sell houses and what kind of homes I wanted to sell. And I went and I marketed to those people. And uh, there were uh, 2018, 2019 was spent every single day, six days a week, door knocking every single day. It, there wasn't a day missed. If there was a day missed, I had to make up for it the next day. Right. Um, is that what you just asked me, Jennifer? Did I is yeah, that what you basically, how, how did you build your business to the point where it is? Yeah. So once you find the client, that's the, I, I think finding the client is the easy part. And then, and then taking care of that client and making sure they actually get more service from you than what you're getting paid out. Yeah, uh, that, that is the key factor. That is the key factor doing more than what you're paid for, uh, for that client. And that's how your business grows. Again, farming database whatever it is at the end of the day it's kind of coming into word of mouth yeah right if you are standing by your word that is your brand and you're willing to do whatever it takes to make sure your clients get what it is that you promised them then your business will grow yeah do you find that that consistency that you've had without all that door knocking for basically two years and i know that we touched on this earlier when you were going through stats um earlier that you've knocked on every single door in this neighborhood and you've talked to every single person in that neighborhood. Have you found that that consistency and that contact has helped you with, helped you build the business to where it is now as well? Of course. Yeah. So uh, it just helps you build the business because you become more confident, right? So for example, like we were looking at houses today on, um, on MLS, Jennifer, when you walked into my office and you said, I said this house sold for 1.4 million. I'm like, I've spoken to this guy, right? So when you go up to a listing appointment and you're talking to a seller and you can actually refer to that house, not just as a house, but you can actually put a name behind it. They know, you know, the neighborhood, right? So it helps, it, it boosts your confidence in that sense. And that comes with hard work. You yeah. put in the time. Yeah. I, I, I kind of started in a similar way where I, <clears throat> I chose a farm and I was flyering it. I started, I started doing it once a month. And then doing open houses in that neighborhood uh, as much as I could. I door knocked it, cold called it. Um, I did everything in this, you know, I think it was 2000 homes or something like that. That's what, when I first started flyer dropping. And then from there, you get a little business out of it, um, start expanding it, right? So you, you, you start going more consistent with the flyers, right? They're starting to see your signs now um, with listings. So it all, it all comes back to the consistency. Um, there was a lot of times where that same farm, I kind of wanted to back off when you don't get a call in, you know, two, three months. Um, but, you know, you're, you're, you're invested in it. And once you pull away from it and, and start somewhere new, you're starting from the ground up, right? So that was, um, that was a, a major, major factor was, was just keep going. Um, it, and, and keep growing, you know, little by little. So, like I said, I started 2000 flyers per month and now I'm up to 15,000 biweekly, right? Wow. Same kind of neighborhood, but just slowly expanding out, expanding out, expanding out. And that's, and that's what a lot of our colleagues in the industry don't see. They think, wow, these guys are huge. They're, they're doing 15,000 flyers. You don't realize that that 15,000 flyers started with 1,000, 2,000, and it involved meeting people, door knocking, doing open oh, exactly. houses. And a couple community people. events in between, right? Exactly. Um, Keeping clients happy. Stuff. Right. Absolutely. Right. Absolutely. So, so there's, a long, there's a long time in there where there's nothing coming to you. That's where you got to have that faith in, in yourself, your abilities, and, 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 the, and, and what the return is that's going to come to you. But... A lot of people 
uh, kind of fall out in the first, I'd say, five months. Right. Yeah. Yeah. Which is which is where I guess the real success comes from is if you've got that uh, tenacity to to keep yeah. pushing and yeah. and as as you know, maybe the the best word for that is faith. Yeah. You've got to yeah. you know it's going to work. But you've got to have the faith that it will work because otherwise, you know, you, you, you quit just before that person who needed to get that flyer that next month would have seen you and you're not 100%. there anymore. And, you know, somebody 100%. else is getting that. So yeah. it sounds like you guys have like you got a very solid in terms of your systems, in terms of your business planning and knowing what to do and, and doing it consistently. So what would you say your typical day looks like? So. How much of the day spent, you know, working within the group, within, you know, you know, your team, you guys have team members as well. How much of the day is spent managing, coaching, getting them to do what they need to do? And then what do you guys individual do, individually do yourselves? I'll let you answer that because you're more scheduled than I am. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, we'll uh, talk about that later. But uh, <laughs> um, I mean, my, my typical day, wake up gym at home usually I spend some time with the with the kids obviously first thing they're, they're my alarm clock right now um, so I wake up wake up with the kids um, do a quick workout at home and then usually try and get in the office 9 9 30 latest um, I'll jump on the phones and either you know cold call or do my lead follow-up for the day um, usually and th this is the same schedule that I tell the team to do right so it, it kind of goes hand in hand um, so nine to 11, nine 30 to 11 30 noon, that should be your calls, right? Focus on calls, focus on door knocking. Um, so like I said, whether it's, you know, for me, I don't do as much cold calling anymore. Now it's more like nurturing, right? Uh, follow-ups, uh, because I built the bad database up where I, where I can, I can just kind of lean on, on follow-ups to push people forward. Um, so we do that in the morning, um, try, you know, take, take lunch midday. Um, and then usually we try and schedule if any showings, you know, their evenings kind of thing. Um, and then anything in between is just, you know, listing shoots, that kind of stuff. Um, you know, um, media, social content, that yeah. type of stuff. You know, we're trying to do the, uh, do, do the videos and the reels a little bit more. So we, we, we work that into the afternoons. Um, so that's kind of, the typical day um but as you guys know in real estate it's not much uh not much typical day every day so <laughs> like that. things change every day so that's what we, we try to stick to um but you know things come up every day and uh, awesome. you have to be flexible so now let's hear Mahib's schedule what does Mahib do <laughs> <laughs> my day is there's, there's here, <laughs> my day is um okay so I used to have that schedule where I'd be at the office at 8.30 in the morning. Uh, and then I ended up having three kids. Um, so that kind of went out the window for now. My days, I pretty I get in, the days I get into the office usually around 10, 30, 11. And that's about maybe two to three times a week I'll be in the office. Uh, most of my work is, uh, I, I'm more concerned with just working on my relationships with my clients. And I don't, there's no schedule for that for me. I just, uh, I know I got to call people, people that are waiting to get stuff done. Um, so I, I work off of that. It's, I, it's, I wish I had a really solid answer for you or a textbook answer for you. I don't. Um, but you know what? Like I, I threw that in there on purpose because let's face it. Yeah. And then, you know, you guys are both, you guys are both young. You've got yeah. uh, kids, Andrew, you've recently, well, a while back, you got twins, right? So, yeah. and Eight he's months. got three kids. And so, yeah. A lot of a lot, you know, the, the beautiful thing about real estate is the fact that there's such flexibility in the schedule, right? You can work as much as you want, you can work as little as you want, you can make as much income or as little income as you want, but it gives you that flexibility of being able to juggle family tasks. And yeah. and for for those of you who've been watching the Driven Show for a while, you'll know that there are realtors, there are hallmarkers that have this solid A, B, C, D, E, F, G type of a schedule, and some that are just, you know. They, they got a free flowing, but the most important thing, and, and Mahip nailed it right there, and Andrew mentioned it as well in, in his schedule, is that you have to know what the important thing, yeah. the important things that you have to do are, yeah. right? And that's, that's, that's really what's it about. So whether you've got a solid schedule that, you know, is very well defined, or you've got a bit more free flowing, depending on your family and your lifestyle, both are fine as long as you know exactly what needs to be accomplished. Now, if you're not accomplishing it, that's a bit different. But 
you can see with, with Mahita and Andrew that, you know, they're doing very well in terms of their performance. So whether you do it Andrew's way or whether you do it Mahita's way, both are fine, right? As long yeah, as you're- so there's, there's non-negotiables that have to get done every single day. Exactly. And there's time made for that. I mean, even if it comes to my personal life, I got to have that time with my kids, right? So when it comes exactly. to business-wise, there's got to be time every single week spent on marketing. And I have days and times for that. There's right. days and times we have set in our schedule that have to be for the team. That's right. Oh yeah, like those are non-negotiable. We, right? we recently introduced Thursdays as our team meet, uh, media day, right? So the team all gets together, we shoot content, and that's you know the the first half of our day is just is just content on Thursdays. Mm -hmm. So we specifically, um, you know, time block that out every single week so that you know we have stuff to put out every single week. Um, mm -hmm. So, so, th so that's important. Um, and then, I mean, you asked the question, things that we do with the team as well. Um, every Monday we have our team meetings, um, kind of just like our sales meeting. And then um, every quarter we, we do our one-on-ones with, with our team just to, you know, see what's in the pipeline and, and see if there's anything that they need from us in terms of training and, and you know, uh, challenges and things that we can help them with. Amazing. Amazing. So I, I get to see firsthand a lot of what the team does because we are in the same office and some of the content creation, who's really the brains behind some of the content? For the most part, I would say, yeah, the brains. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> who's got the better dance skills? He does. Oh, I don't know about that. Come on. <laughs> I have videos. I have videos. Well, yeah, well, yeah, I, have, I, have, I have videos. We're live now. Should we put it to the test or what? Say that again. Should we put it to the test or what? <laughs> no, no. I'm kidding. <laughs> Sorry, I have videos to prove it. <laughs> That's well, awesome. Fo follow the Instagram. You might see it. <laughs> <laughs> you have to be quick though before it gets taken down sometime. <laughs> exactly. But on, in all honesty, like I, I do, I get to see a lot of what you and the team do together. And it, it's really kind of an honor for me to be working with um, you and the whole bold group. But, you know, a lot of people are struggling with motivation right now. So what keeps you motivated personally? Because you as leaders need to, to stay motivated. And then what are you doing to help your team stay motivated? It's a good question. Um, yeah, I mean, de definitely with the shift in the market, there's a lot of people who are probably, you know, n not in the highest spirits. Um, and, I and I've been here before. I mean, I've seen, you know, you go on a stretch where you, you don't sell something in a month, two months, and you're just like, oh my gosh, what's going on? Um, I think the main thing is, I mean, in, in general, I I'm kind of a self-motivated person, but when, you when I do kind of feel like I'm falling back, um, I like to, I like to reach out to people who I know genuinely have your back, genuinely have your best interest. So, I mean, Mahip is, is one of my biggest motivators. Um, Sam is one of my biggest motivators, you know, our, our, our broker manager there, Sam, um, who else? I mean, the team, now that we have a team built, they motivate me every day. I know, you know, I got to put numbers on the board. I got to, uh, you know, show up and, and show face for the team. Um, so, so that motivates me every day. Um, and then, like I said, just me versus myself. I like to, I like to compete. I like to do better than I've done in the past. Um, so I always look at, you know, last year, what I did last year, how can I do better? How can I improve my business? How can I improve my life? Um, so it's just, you know, taking a step back, I guess, and, 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 you know, looking at yourself in the mirror and, and kind of just saying like, all right, we got to, we got to get going here. Yeah. Um, I mean, for me, you got to have goals, right? You got to have things that you need to accomplish and you could have all these goals. And um, if, if they mean something to you, if they truly are going to light a fire within you, you're going to accomplish them. And the other thing is we say the market's slow. I mean, how many homes do you think Trap is gonna is gonna be sold through Trap this month? Six thousand, seven thousand minimum, right? Can you get one of those? You should be able to, right? So, it's, I I I think we focus on oh my god, we used to have ten thousand sales a month and now they're down to seven thousand. We focus on the loss, but we don't focus on the seven thousand that are happening. 
they're still yeah. selling. There's still people out in the market who need to buy, who need to sell, who need to move because lifestyle, lifestyle is changing. Focus on that. Yeah. And if you have good goals where they're, they're going to get you moving every single morning, you are going to focus on them because you can't afford to look at the negative. Yeah. Right? right. When you hit a seller's market, you hit a negative with the buyers. Mm -hmm. Somebody's always complaining. It's either the buyer or the seller. Someone's always going to complain. Your job is to make sure help, you help them understand what's happening and why it's happening. Exactly. And I, I think oh, if, you, if you do start falling down that path of negativity and, you know, just f find people who aren't there. Yeah. Right. Like we come into the office and our, our team is energized and that, that's because we're all feeding off each other. Right. Um, you know, if we, if we were all kind of down, it wouldn't be a good place to be. Right. <laughs> exactly. So to just pull yourself out of it, you know, if you have to take a few days to, to, you know, refocus and, and clear your mind from real estate and then just know that you're coming back and coming back strong mindset wise. Um, I think that's, that's, that's a fantastic way to get motivated again. And that's Amazing. also huge uh, kudos to Remax Hallmark leadership team. And I'm not, I'm not just Absolutely. saying it. Absolutely. Like I've been at other brokerages and I know how horrible it gets there. I know what kind of crap they focus on. Here it's a different story. Right? There's, it's there's a lot of we, value. We don't have room for negative mindset around. There isn't. Here. There isn't. If, if you have negative mindset, I think that person is going to last you a week and they're being gone. They, can't, they won't last you. It wouldn't work. Okay. Yeah. So, what, so while we're on this um, discussion, I mean, in terms of being able to stay motivated and being positive and, and, and definitely looking at it as where are the opportunities, not necessarily, you know, what are the challenges that are just going to bring, bring me down and bring opportunities down? Where do the opportunities lie in there? Because on the, on, when the market was on the way up, everybody was saying, oh, there's no listings. You know, why are we, we're competing so much heavily into multiple offers. We keep losing. Now that you got what you wanted, like the buyers got what they wanted. And the buyer agents got what they wanted. They're not just sitting on the fence. And so now, now they're hiding. Yeah. Putting things into that context, you know, sort of makes sense in terms of how to properly look at things. And so here's a question for both of you. And, and you know, this may be, you know, something that, you know, a lot of us watching this, listening to this will benefit from in, in this environment. And, you know, we say a lot, you know, there's, there's always, there's always some sort of a challenge, no matter what market we're in. Right when there's an abundance of listings, there's a challenge in that market. When there's no listings but multiple offers and prices are shooting all the way up, there's also challenges in that in that market. So, putting it into the context of this current market, there are some realtors that are going to be watching this. Some of them are here now. Some of them are listening to you, and some of them will listen to this on the podcast or watch it on YouTube. Some of them may be, you know, 20, 30, 40 years in the business. Some of them might just have been, you know, starting out, maybe less than a year or just they literally got licensed in the past month or so. What would your advice be to those realtors, whether they're experienced or whether they're new in the context of the current market and you know, based on everything they've heard from you today, what would your piece of advice be for them? In terms of what, like what should they be doing? No, just in, just in general, just like what would, what would you tell? Okay, let's, let's put it this way. Let's say you're starting out today. So both of yeah. you travel, time travel back in time and you're yeah. uh, completely new agents. What would you tell yeah. yourself? Get off your ass and go door knock. <laughs> <laughs> Simply yeah. put, there's so many, so many people out there that need to sell, right? You literally look out the window and there's for sale signs going up everywhere. Yeah, I would, I would say uh, find, find the sellers that are truly motivated don't waste your time and your money and your investment on staging and photos if they're these sellers who are like oh we'll sell if we get this much in the back of your mind you're like i don't know if they're gonna get that price you know you yeah. have to find the people who have real motivation and be market. honest and be honest be right? honest with your client um, they deserve it and then and then i mean i would target buyers i i mean we're gonna be running some buyer seminars we're gonna be doing some stuff for buyers to to try and get them you know excited and, and into the market because this truly is a good time to buy yeah um so if if, if people don't see that it's because they don't know they're, they're not educated right. enough to to realize that it is a good time to buy um, anybody who buys now in five years they're going to be way ahead of the game right so we we need to we need to find those buyers qualified buyers um so that's what i would say is is you know maybe 
if you're targeting listings too much, then, you know, do some things to try and get some buyers to offset things because, you know, you're going to have a, a better time working with buyers right now for the most part um, than, than you will be, you know, working with certain sellers. I mean, like I said, if you find the seller that's having to sell for, you know, for a real life reason, um, then, then that's fantastic. If they're on board with, with your suggestions on price and price recommendations, then that's a great seller. Um, but a lot of people are still, they, they don't understand the, the price drop that we've taken and, and their heads are still stuck, you know, three months ago. So, um, you know, maybe shifting the mindset from seller to buyer might help your business and um, you know, focus on people who, who truly have to make a move. And stop watching the news. Yes. <laughs> yeah, not going to help you. CP24, turn it off. Yeah. Start watching the bold group TikToks. There you go. <laughs> no, really, truly, honestly speaking, though, like go, if, if you're on Instagram, like go follow somebody who's done what you want to do, right? Uh, follow those people and watch what they're doing. Reach out to them. Like there's an agent out in Ottawa um, that back in 2017, 2018, I used to, I used to literally, I think I used to message him on a weekly basis to see how he grew his team to where he is today. And these guys that are doing that kind of business, I think that guy sells about 150 homes a year on his own. The ones who are doing that kind of business, they are very helpful. They want to help. They want to see you grow, right? They, they don't want people that are not doing business around them. Mm -hmm. So reach out to them. Yeah, stop watching the news and reach out to those guys or follow the bold group. I mean, <laughs> <laughs> No, honestly. So, I mean, obviously I follow all of my agents on their social media platforms and I actually love the, every one of your TikToks that you guys put out. Their content, their quick, easy to digest content. So, you, you know. Thanks, Jen. <laughs> I'm a fan. What can I say? <laughs> um, but honestly, um, we are going to head into the, we are going to open it up to all, everybody here who's as well who have, may have questions relating directly to you but you know I've definitely got at least one more question for you guys before we open it up to the floor here we go go for it oh it's, it's so tough to Tim Hortons or Starbucks Tim Hortons Tim Hortons yeah yeah wow yeah I don't know those 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 fancy drinks just don't do it for me <laughs> I don't want to pay six dollars for a coffee. Like I'm just, I don't know. Call me frugal. Call me smart. I don't know. I just doesn't 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 do it, do it for me. Too many taste the same. I love it. See, look, Bieber plug. <laughs> <laughs> there you go. <laughs> Gotta love it. Do we have any questions from anybody who's watching? Yeah, feel free to type it into the chat or unmute yourself. Wave your hands. I can't see anything. We're that good. They have no questions. I have a question, actually. Do you find that, you know, since you, because you started your business before kids and now you both have very young families, how has that changed your outlook with business overall? Me personally, I, uh, I, I take more time off. I schedule my uh, time off before I schedule my work appointments. Yeah, uh, that's very important because at one point, uh, I think last year I wasn't and I was completely burnt out completely. Yeah. Yeah. So my, myself, my pr first priority will always be my kids and my family. They'll always be the first priority. Business will have to fit into my life, not the other way around. Yeah, it, wow. it's tough for me making the adjustment because I'm kind of new into this whole thing. Um, my my girls are only eight months. Um so it, it's this transition has been it, tough because I I like working I really do um, I like uh, I like the grind and uh, you know if if I had it my way I'd probably try and work more hours if I could but I know it's not realistic right because I mean uh, my my fiance needs help at home so I mean it's it, it, it is a balance, but, um, I, you know, on, on weekends now is, is kind of my main thing is I try to clear up my weekends as much as possible. Um, you know, and, the, and that was one of the big things when we were getting into starting a team is, is, you know, how can we, 
how can we, you know, free up more of our time, right? Whether it's, you know, having one of our buyer agents take out our buyers on evenings, on weekends, um, you know, doing open houses, having them do, do open houses to try and get them leads that way uh, to free up our weekends again. Um, th these are just kind of little adjustments that, you know, we're trying, I'm trying to put into place now to, to give me some more time with them because, like I said, I, I, I do like to work. I like to, you know, if, if I could just grind it out, I would. Um, but that wouldn't, wouldn't make me uh, the best family man. So <laughs> he's actually not BSing. He would actually be here 24 seven. Yeah. I enjoy it. So yeah, he would be here 24 seven. It, it's been a, it's been a, it's been a tough adjustment for sure, but um, I'm get I'm, I'm learning how to balance it for sure. No. And I love that you're actually able to share that with people because we have so many agents who start the business you know, single, able to grind all the time, and then I start adjusting to family life. And, you know, that guilt as a parent and as an agent really can kick in and it can be a stumbling block to a lot of agent success down the road. Yep. So I think in the beginning, you do have to spend more time on your business. If, if you want it to grow again, for sure. if you want it to be at a certain level, you do have to, and th th there's always sacrifices. Would your family life get sacrificed? hundred percent, it would. And then once you get to get it to a certain point, then you have to understand. Okay, now can I allocate more time? There's all. It's either your business will struggle or your family life will struggle. Something's always going to struggle. Mm -hmm. So you just got to find what works for you. And that's the reason you get into this business as well. And uh, you know, for your trajectory's sake, uh, if you were both just individual agents, you wouldn't have that same you know, leverage over the, you know, the productivity you have and the schedules that you have. Uh, and so anybody aspiring to get into becoming a team, I mean, if, if there's one benefit to that, it's the fact that you can leverage other skills um, and other team members, you help them achieve what they want, you get to achieve your time freedom and be able to live the lifestyle you dream about, right? And yeah. when and you know the what, it, it even works for people who are on our team, right? If they exactly. have clients and have buyers, and they want to take a vacation. Well, look, you have, you know, four or five other people here to, to cover you. Right. And uh, you know, they're going to be in good hands because they're the people you work with every day. So I, th I think the team atmosphere is fantastic. Um, you know, I, I think we have a, a good thing going here. And, um, you know, if, if people are kind of lost for direction, I would always say consider a team because it's, it's going to help you balance your life. It's going to help you stay motivated. It's going to give you accountability. Um, there's a lot of th good things that, that come out of a team, I think, definitely. Yeah. So, Good. Well, thank you both for joining us. And um, for those of you who have watched and wanted to want to connect, uh, I put the links in there and we'll put it in the description as well. www.getoldgroup.ca. You can also connect to Mahip and Andrew's social media. Um, through the website and uh, feel free to reach out to them and send them referrals for uh, Durham and uh, GTA area. So Mahip, uh, Andrew, thank you so much for spending Thanks, time with Jennifer and I today. And we wish you and your team much more continued success in the future. Thank Appreciate you very much. It, Thanks for having us. Jennifer, thank you so much. Thanks, John. <laughs>